directional than I had imagined. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay. I was singing to the side of it. Uh, so um, I want to do a little uh, song with all of you. This is, uh, it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers and also to all you earth mothers. I don't have children of my own, but I consider myself an earth mother and I have lots of music students. We all mother and father and parent in different ways. We nurture and protect. But this is a, a song that I'd like to do with you, to sing with you, and um, called The River She Is Flowing. So um, I'll sing it through, and then as you, <coughs> as you uh, catch on to the melody and the, the way it goes, uh, join in. Or even if you don't catch on, just join in. <laughs> Jump into the river. <laughs> 
the river she is flowing flowing and growing the river she is flowing down to the sea And are there any new people this week? Uh, <laughs> That's right. Hey. Want to introduce him? Uh, this is Logan, and he is my grandson extraordinaire. Came all the way from Hawaii. Wow. 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 Yeah. Aloha. 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 And mahalo. <laughs> One of the things we have, or we have a, a new person, if you're new to Bremerton Unity, we welcome you in the, in the spirit of love, and we want to uh, know that no matter where you are in your journey of faith, you are always welcome here. We know that the world is a better place when we are willing to share our hearts, and so we have a heart for you. Thank you. We give you this heart as a symbol of the steadfast spirit that lives within each of us, and we ask you to carry this symbol as a member of this Red Heart Fellowship. Let it be a reminder that the love of God is always with you, and to share your heart wherever you go. The Red Heart as a symbol of fellowship in the world, and spread the love one heart at a time. And let's start the movement here. And we have... Our musician is Jesse Young. Yay! Yay. 
next speaker is Kate Montana. Yay. Our chaplains are Debbie Lee and Joe. Yay. And after the service, if uh, you need a little extra pray, our chaplains will be up here <coughs> and we'll join you. The youth ed champion is Nora. Hospitality host is Mary Ellen. We have the director of technology, sound, video, computer, Mark Swain. I'm your platform person, obviously. <laughs> oh, it was a surprise. I'm Ron Savage. We have Unity Happenings. Uh, we have next week on the 21st, we have guest speaker is Reverend Sherry Schultz. And on the 28th, we have our own Rosella Sims. <coughs> and I believe Sandy is going to be the platform speaker for that. <laughs> it's going to be Old Home Week. Yeah. Uh, June 6th, we have Noon Moon Circle with Suzanne Eau Claire. It's a, it's a talk, and it's got a mini reading included with it, and uh, there's a sign-up sheet out in the lobby area, and it's a $15 class. It's supposed to be very good. There's a mark on your calendar, June 10th, for the Springtime Women's Potluck Luncheon and Retreat. And the... the it's supposed to be about phenomenal women, women connecting. So it says bring, bring a potluck item. And then we have a special picnic on August 20th. We all get together in the uh, Soroptimist Park. I think I said that right. So we have a weekly board. Uh, Report? We do. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we have the um, we have our flowers to go certificates are still available for purchase through the end of May. Um, if you would like to share this wonderful gift with people that you know. Um, it's a great opportunity for, um, you know, put a little bouquet in your house or give to a friend. Um, you would need to take an order form and fill it out. People can also order the certificates from our website. This event is posted on the Unity Facebook page, and you can share that event on your page as well. So you know, bring it over from the men, you're all of your friends. If you have questions on how to do that, please talk to Cindy Swink. Um, we have, um, as Ron said, we have reserved the NAD Shroff to Miss Park for our annual picnic event for August 20th. So pencil that in on the calendar and more um, information will be forthcoming. So, um, if anyone is, is interested in joining the platform team, again, please see Cindy Swink. Recently, Marilyn mentioned that she reads the Daily Word on the inspirational phone number line, um, which is 360-479-1758. So if you ever need some inspiration, please come and listen to the Daily Word read by Marilyn. It's really great. We also post the Daily Word on our Facebook page and Twitter. So if you don't already follow us on Facebook or Twitter, please do so. We also post events... <laughs> <laughs> we also post events and other updates on Facebook. Videos of each Sunday service, the Sunday message, and when available, the Sunday medita meditation are all available on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks to Mark and Cindy. Yeah. Yeah. Just awesome. <laughs> we also have a weekly eBlast newsletter that provides current and future events. If you are interested in receiving this weekly eBlast newsletter, you can sign up on our website at 
www.univision.org or fill out the EBOS newsletter sign up sheet in the fellowship area. And thank you to uh, Susan, I knew that, <laughs> for putting that together. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. <laughs> Membership renewal forms are available in the fellowship area, and we do need those forms completed and t turned in no later than June 15th. Um, if you have any questions or any problems, please see a board member. A suggestion box is now in the fellowship area. If you have any ideas or suggestions for guest speakers, mm -hmm. guest musicians, or events that you would like to see, or any other suggestions, please write them and put them in the box. If you want a response, please include your name and contact information. The board will review these on a monthly basis. And our next board meeting is on the May 21st. So if you have anything you want to put in the box, then. Um, at the recent Hop Cop event, there were two committees that were formed, technology and attendance. If you are interested in signing up for one of these committees, please use the sign-up sheets in the fellowship. And um, thank you. And <laughs> so now I'll be lighting the, uh, the Christ candle, and the candle represents the divine light within each of us. Say. 
went south. <laughs> Today's daily word is, is motherly love, but I want to acknowledge my own mom too. I She got me going on, on a daily word subscription, I don't know, 112 years ago. It was a long time ago. And it was so sweet. Um, I was in my first apartment. But it, and she had just had started, she had discovered unity of Bremerton with Mary and Brown, you know, 100 years ago. <laughs> but, uh, and she also said, you know, even if you don't read it all the way through, just read the, 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 the main caption or the biblical uh, quote at the bottom, just, you know, a bit. But if you own your own subscription, you can write in it and highlight it, and, you know, and write in the margins if you're one of those kind of people, as I am. <laughs> you can't leave... Some people don't touch books they, they, other than read them. They just read them and keep them pristine. A book is to be written in. <laughs> That's part of loving it, is writing in it and writing your own stuff. And then you know, when you go back the next time, you know, another year or so and re look at it again, you may not touch a daily work because you got another year's subscription coming at you, you know, you, but... Then you go back and uh, look at it and look where you were at that time. Today, motherly love. I bless all mothers in my prayers. I'm blessing feline mothers as well. <laughs> Nurturing and caring for another living being is a sacred activity. Today, I take the opportunity to give thanks for all who have shared unconditional love and acceptance with me. A mother can be anyone who takes on a role of caring for a child, whether that person is a biological or adoptive parent, another relative, a teacher, or a friend. The most important aspect in being a mother is to love and care for a child unconditionally. Patience and compassion are mainstays for these expressions of love in action. Just as caring mothers hold loved ones in their arms, so too do I hold them in my prayers. From Ephesians 6, verses 2 and 3. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Today, I bless all mothers in my prayers. God bless us.
Well, I chose this song. I, I wanted to do a different song with you guys. This is a song I wrote. It's one of my... So I am a... I uh, have many, many music students. <laughs> and I love to nurture them and help them follow their potential. And this is a favorite of theirs, this song. So I thought it would be fun to do today. And also, mothers are mothering. Uh, my... You know, they're, they're really good at helping us... Um, uh, or, or the ideal role of a mother. <laughs> and, uh, my mother sure did, but and does. But they help us really help light our way. And this song is the yellow daffodil is a sim, symbol or metaphor um, for those. It's it's like how do you know? You may not know how you know it, but you know it's it's that those markers along the way that show us that uh, we're on the, the right track mm -hmm. and they're comforting and they're reassuring and um, it always comes in a language that's unique and personal to each of us so anyway i'm we're going to practice this course and then i'm going to do the song and i would love for you guys to join in with me my my students love to sing this um some of them and um so <coughs> i'm going to sing it through and then we'll do it together so it goes like this Daffodils, they will light your way. Follow the yellow daffodils over this path of black and gray. Let's try that together. Here we go. <laughs> Follow the yellow daffodils, they will light your way. Follow the yellow daffodils over this path of black and gray. You guys are so good. I'm going to teach you this next part. Okay, it goes like this. Through every storm that you go through And when your heart is torn Let's do that together Through every storm that you go through And when your heart is torn And then it's Follow the yellow daffodils And they will lead you home Oh, you guys sound beautiful I've never actually had people sing with me on this before And you sound amazing Let's do it one more time and then we'll plug it in Here we go Follow the yellow daffodils, they will light your way. Follow the yellow daffodils, or the path of black and gray. Through every storm that you go through, and when your heart is torn. Follow the yellow daffodils, they will lead you home. Awesome, you guys. Okay, here we go. Now I have to remember how the beginning of the song goes. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Hmm. Am I alive? Where have I gone? What do I feel? I don't feel strong. I must have fallen through some cracks of the sidewalk. What holds me back as I walk along this winding road to my dreams? I hear a voice and it says, here we go.
So, um, I'm going to play a song that uh, is on my Earthblood album, and I do have some CDs here. If you guys would like to take some more music away with you if you haven't already. Um, but this is um, a CD that I put out last year, and it's for our planet. And it really comes out of my great love for the planet, <coughs> unconditional love, and desire to protect it. Uh, and I wanted to play this today, and it's, um, it's called Not With The Vikings. <laughs> stay after church next week. And it appears our candle went out, so I'm going to relight the Christ candle. <laughs> and it's my privilege to uh, introduce at this time our guest speaker, Kate Montana. Not hide my water. <laughs> Good 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to be back in Bremerton. <laughs> this is a, I, I walked in, I was like, oh my god, you rearranged the furniture. <laughs> I've been on a seven-week book tour down in the south in California and sunny Arizona and sunny New Mexico and all those sunny places that we've all forgotten about that they even exist. But uh, wow, it is good to be back. And happy Mother's Day. Who's a mom in this in this room? Oh my heavens. Grandma? Great grandma? Wow. <laughs> That's something. I'm not a mom myself in the traditional sense of birthing another human being into the world. What a privilege that is. What a terrifying event. <laughs> An ongoing responsibility, being a parent. Um, I am going to talk about motherhood a bit today in a different sort of way. Motherhood is creation at its essence. And there's no experience on this earth that gives us the felt sense of, in a way, what it must be like to be source itself, bringing life into fruition, holding cre creation in the womb and the ongoing evolution of the life force in its billions and zillions and quadrillions of expression. Oh my God. For that moment, for that nine months, we hold oneness as our being. We are one with another being, literally. And it's motherhood and pregnancy is not limited to being a, a mom birthing another human being into the world. We have the wonderful opportunity to experience this sense of unification with source, intelligence, the creative movement itself when we're birthing any project whether we're man or woman, uh, childless or with tons of kids, when we create a business, when we create beautiful music, when we inspire others with our words, when we write a book, when we do a painting. The moment of creation and those months, days, years, whatever of gestation, however long it takes to bring a particular creation into fruition, and you're in passion you are in a state, well, maybe of also confusion and a little bit of conflict and fear, and that goes with it, but oh my God, well, it's the unified experience. You are pregnant, and it's amazing. Motherhood, <coughs> creation, is the, the foundation of life itself. There ain't nothing without that. So it is very peculiar to find that we're in a situation on our planet and in the United States right now where it seems that life itself is under attack. You just heard, we just heard a beautiful song about the environment and protection of the environment against corporate forces and other forces that seem to have a different agenda going on altogether. Right now we've got, my God, the legislation was just passed where states can now defund Planned Parenthood. Legislation is, is in the works to make it legal to forcibly separate children from their mothers if the mother is an illegal immigrant. So they're holding the fear of taking a child away as a safeguard, to, as part of the wall to keep others yeah. out. It's now okay to expand collateral damage in war as a technique to torture women and children as a way to sustain our agendas in the political arena. What the hell is this? <laughs> the EPA is being dismantled. Climate change is being denied. Arts programs, funding for the arts, the very thing that brings liveliness to our steps and to our souls and a smile on our faces that expresses the very innate, God-given right of creation, of being one with source, is being slowly eroded. What the hell is going on? I can't be the only person wondering that question. So, that's what I want to talk about today, is address what the hell is going on and what the hell we can do about it. 
last time I stood over there, <laughs> last time I stood over there and talked about the ego and how it's born. And I'm going to do a really brief reprise on this just to refresh your memory. Because this is at the very heart of what the hell's going on. When a baby is brought into the world and spits out of the birth canal and it hits the light and it's like the tsunami of physical sensory information. Holy crap, it's light and it's dark and it's wet and it's dry and it's rough and it's smooth and it's cold and it's wet and it's dank and it's dark and it's scary and there's instruments and scalpels and oh my god, some guy in a mask and something over his head and ah, what am I doing here? <laughs> 11 million bits of sensory data assault that baby's brain every second. Skin texture, temperature, air, heat, sound, light, visual, senses, knowledge, the whole nine yards, 11 million bits of sensory data. And it's ongoing right now. Everyone <coughs> sitting here in this room, your brain is getting a flood of 11 million bits of sensory data informing you that this world is physical. Physical, physical, physical. My body tells me that. Now this is the ocean the fish swims in. This is the unconscious grounding of our being, of our humanity, the bound, the ground level of our ego. I am physical. It's an unconscious message that we carry with us from the moment of birth to the moment of death. The second message that comes from our senses is that my body tells me, my eyes tell me, I am separate. Again, it's unconscious. I'm over here, you're over there. I'm not you, you're, you're, you're not me. And as a little baby, I'm not conscious that mommy is outside of me and daddy's outside of me, but the milk I hunger for and have to have to sustain me is out there somewhere. And so I have to somehow cry or manipulate or look really cute or whatever it is. I have to learn really right out the bat how to manipulate what appears to be the outside environment so that I can be safe, so that I can survive. So the ground level of our identity as human beings, our ego, our sense of self, is I am physical and I am separate. Now what this does is this creates a very, very scary dynamic in every human being on this planet. It's unconscious. But if I unconsciously believe that I am alone and individual and isolated from you and you and you and you and you, it sets up a ground level sense of insecurity. It also sets into motion what we call competition, capitalism. That's at the very root. We have to compete to survive against the other. That whatever it is person out there. Hopefully it's mommy and daddy and my friends and my neighbor and my church community and they support and love me, but I'm also given the other message that there are a lot of unloving people who are not going to support me, who will hurt me physically, emotionally, mentally, psychically. So self-protection and competition and fear arise naturally out of the fact that we live in physical bodies. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's the thing we can do about it, however, is to know about it, to start to understand what the framework we're dealing with is, why we're at each other's throats, why there are people who are in power who have to be king of the mountain to prove themselves to shore up that insecure place inside them that is still that little infant unconsciously believing that the world is out there and that it's a scary freaking place. So we have to build walls, we have to have weapons, we have to have lots of money, we have to have 10,000 vacation homes, whatever it is to shore that insecure place up. The other thing that we don't realize that we have to start getting a handle on is the nature of this place we live called planet Earth, the physical realm, the physical realm. We have physicality, we have separation, and then we are born into a place of duality, where there's light and dark, 
and up and down, and right and left, and in and out, and fat and skinny, and intelligent and stupid, black and white. <coughs> it's just the nature of reality. Because way back, I forget how many billions of years ago, if you're not a creative, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not a fundamentalist and you believe actually in evolution, way back when <coughs> the Big Bang happened X number of billions of years ago, do you know what the very first thing created was? Electromagnetic polarity. Wow. The very first thing that was created. Big Bang happens and then, let me see, less than a second later. It's actually point zero 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 thirty two zeros one of a second. We had positive and negative. That is the foundation of existence on planet Earth. So, now we believe we're physical beings, we believe we're separate, therefore we're vulnerable, we're isolated from one another, we're competitive, we're scared, we have to be secure, we have to secure the physical base, we have to survive. We also are in a system of duality. It would seem the cards are stacked against us. <laughs> But again, what we need is understanding so that we can handle and manage these forces. So in Taoism, they talk about the polarized forces as yin and yang. And everything in creation has different elements and aspects and qualities to it. The feminine yin is the, let me see, earth and water. It's, it's multifaceted. It's like quicksilver. It's all over the map. It's watery and fluid and moving. The yang is fixed and fiery and structured. The yang, the masculine, the male, the positive force in creation is structured. These are tendencies and qualities. I'm not saying all men are like this and all females are like this. These are tendencies that create the foundation of how we live. So we have intellectual and versus the emotional. We have rules and regulations versus fluidity and, and chaos. Kali energy is chaotic. It's rip snorting. It'll just tear your house down and it will flower and build it back up. It is uncontrollable. The feminine is out of control. <laughs> It's everything. It's ravenous. It's nurturing. It's scintillating and it's quiet. It's all over the freaking map. <laughs> Yang energy, the masculine doesn't like that. It needs to be controlled. So now I'm beginning to get to a place to understand even more what's going on in our current political situation. The powers of polarity and the effect of this divisiveness that we have, this camp we live in, bleed into spirituality and religion. We have a spiritual ego on top of our regular ego that says, I'm a limited, isolated, standalone unit called a human being and I have to fight to survive and all this stuff going on. Then I'm saved. I find Jesus or I find Buddha or I embrace unity and all is well. Unfortunately, what happens is we don't tend to realize that our old prejudices and the old identifications and forces are still at work even in our religious structures and our spiritual structures. There is still... All right, how many people here pray to go to the dark? <laughs> okay, yeah. Nobody asks for that. We all want to go to the light. Oh, God, please take me to the light. Nobody wants to go to the darkness. It's a very scary place because we don't know what is contained in the darkness. But the darkness, the womb of the void of all potential that gives us life, the womb, the dark womb that brings forth a child, the dark womb of the mind that brings forth a piece of, that brings forth a piece of music that's never existed before. Wow. That's the cradle of creation. It also holds all the scary things inside of us that we don't want to see, which is why we put it away. 
But we live in a society that's very structured and very much lost in this dualistic right, wrong, good, bad, I've got the answers, you don't. I know how it is, you don't. And I know the light and intelligence and Jehovah and the masculine God and whatever we want to call him is right and is going to hold this place together against the vast dark forces of chaos. And the feminine has taken the brunt of this for the last 4,000 years since the rise of the patriarchal religions. Nothing wrong with this. This is evolution. We started off with the goddess and the identification with the chaos and the void and the, the womb and creation, and then we've moved into exploring the light, the intellect, intelligence, that other aspect of ourselves, and we identify with the light, with the light, with the light. Where we've got to go is in the middle. Not back to the Kali energy. Incorporate, embrace the feminine, the wildness, the beauty, the confusion, the sensitivity, the nurturing, along with the intelligence and the structure and the rules. The point is balance, which is incorporation, which is unity. Mm -hmm. What we've got going on is a society that isn't aware of these dynamics. We're ignorant. A great vast majority of humanity is still ignorant. To the point that, and here's, here's the really creepy answer to the earlier question of why the hell is this happening. I'm tippy-toying into it with this discussion of light and dark forces and how the light is always held up as the ideal and the feminine is dismissed as scary and dangerous. I was on the computer way back in the Middle Ages, about the year 2000, on the internet, and I ran across a, an article by Dan Rather, the newscaster. And he was speaking at a commencement of like Harvard or something like that. And he told the young people who were incredibly concerned about environmental issues and where are we going and how can we be wiser in our path as human beings and more evolutionary and more nurturing and supportive of each other and the earth, the health of the earth. And, and he said the reason we're dealing with the forces that we're dealing with, he said, I was approached after some environmental legislation was squashed in Congress. He said, I interviewed several congressmen and senators who had voted against the environmental legislation, and I was confused, so I asked them to please, please explain how the hell you can vote against saving planet Earth. And the answer was they sat him down and went, boy, you've got to understand that we are trying our best to save humanity. And the way we're going to save humanity is by bringing humanity into the light of God, by destroying the darkness and the earth. As it is said in Revelations, we are going to bring forward Armageddon because the Bible says that there shall not be an ascension to heaven by humanity until the last tree is cut down and there is nothing left standing. So we're actually uh, the good guys. We are trying to help humanity get through this painful process and end the suffering quicker. So that's why we vote against environmental legislation and arts and children and mothers. It blew my socks off. I never understood this before, how anybody could have that kind of mentality. But it's very strong. Fundamentalism is making an incredible comeback in our world today, and not just in the United States. And this is the kind of polarized, egoic, ignorance, belief systems that is driving what's going on today. So, what do we do about it? Well, just being here in this room, is the greatest hope on earth. The fact that there are people such as you and me who are coming together in the light of a different understanding. 
who are not afraid to embrace all aspects of the human experience, light and dark, positive and negative, masculine and feminine, and walk in unity. So I wanted to say thank you very much for being who you are and the kind of mind that you have and the open heart that you bring to this engagement and to your life because this is the, <coughs> this is kind of the last stand. This is where we've got all got to stand up and make a choice and make a real difference and get involved because, and this is the exciting part about what we're experiencing today is, oh my God, our motherhood, our parenthood is now expanding beyond our own pregnancy and taking care of our own progeny, whether it's our own children or whether it's our own music school or our own art or let me, God, please, I need to sell a whole bunch of books so I can get my next book published so that I can, you know, be, be a writer for a living. It's got to expand beyond personal parenthood and personal interests. And so I wanted to end this with a little meditation that I use that I find extremely helpful to shift into a larger understanding about motherhood. This beautiful, creative, nurturing, protective place in our hearts that now needs to extend itself into our communities beyond just our own families, beyond just the comfort of our own churches and congregations, and ooze out into the rest of the world to get involved and to become the parents in a larger sense. So, uh, without further ado, if you'd just like to get comfortable. <coughs> hey, would you like a little bit of very, very soft music behind you, or should we just have silence? Let's just have silence. Okay. Thank you, though. Mm -hmm. I've learned to embrace the silence as much as I love music, but thank you. Me too. It's, it's part of music as well, silence. Absolutely. It's in the pause. Yeah. I know I stepped you guys through an exercise last time that was all about who you are, and it's all in the pause, and that empty moment with no story behind it. Okay, so close your eyes. Take a few calm breaths. And just feel into your body. Be comfortable in your skin. Sense the room around you, the person sitting next to you. Now, I'd like you to imagine holding a child. And it doesn't have to be your child. And it doesn't even have to be a human child. It can be a creation, a song, a painting whatever, but well, now let's stick to children for the moment. Imagine holding a child. It's that sweet, sweet being that is the extension, the blossoming of life. All life, it's you. You can nurture and protect and be responsible for that child, but what about two children? Can you hold and embrace and nurture two children? Can you be responsible for two children? Now, imagine that there's a different way of looking at responsibility. You do not have to be responsible for the tuition for that child. What if you had 10 children? You're not responsible for the upbringing, but you can hold them. You can be response able to their needs. You can love them. So how many children can you hold and respond to in your heart? Five? <coughs> can you hold and embrace and love ten children? One hundred? A thousand? How many children can you hold in your heart and nurture in your mind and soul? How many can you respond to? A million? We are infinite boundaryless beings and we hold
hold all life within us. And we are able to respond to all of it with love and compassion. And that is the heart of motherhood. You can open your eyes anytime you want. That lies at the foundation of it all. That's the trick. That's the answer to ignorance and fear, isolation and separation, is this inclusiveness, this beautiful state where we know we are response-able to the whole of the world. Starting with ourselves, and it's not a strain, and it's not a stretch, and it's not scary, because it is simply us, and it comes from our heart and who we really are, that beautiful, intelligent, creative source of all things. So, that's the answer. Be a mother to all creation. You hold it within yourself, know it, and walk it. And that's what I wanted to share today. I really, uh, this is a very different topic for me. I've never talked about the masculine and the feminine, let alone, you know, well, what am I going to say about motherhood <laughs> and you know, happy Mother's Day? Well, what a blessing if we extend our identity about what mothering is to include the whole of the world and start stepping up and taking responsibility at a larger individual level, coming together as one. Thank you so much for having me. That was beautiful day. Well, I'm glad because I have a song to follow that incredible sharing. Um, and I'm, I'm really inspired and, and uplifted and empowered by your talk today. Okay, as I, I'm sure many of us, if not all of us are. And encouraged to go back into the dark. Sometimes that is scary. So it's kind of what this whole song is about in creation and all that good stuff. This is called Once Upon a Green, and uh, Once Upon the Green, and it's um, from my first CD, Orange Roses.
It's uh, that time again, our offertory time. As you're preparing your tithes and love offerings today, think of how blessed you are. And as you write your check or giving your gift, send out your blessings. And during this time of offertory, uh, I'll be lighting the candles so that you can come up and write out something and burn it or <coughs> make a blessing for someone or a prayer for yourself.
we get to have our board member for the week and our chaplains. Together, please. We dedicate these gifts in service to the highest mission, recognizing and celebrating our oneness with God. We joyfully and freely participate in the law of circulation, of giving and receiving, knowing God is source, the source of all good. We are grateful. It's that moment in time when we talk about the good news. And my good news is my parents are still kicking around. And I get to have lunch with them today oh, with my brothers. Good, my good news is my mother's 99 and a half, and we're, we're going to have a family reunion in Wisconsin in June. Yay. I believe it's the 16th, but um, you know, I've had a passion about the truth about cancer, and of course, we've had a couple of very loved people uh, recently. And the entire nine-part series is going to be shown free again. I think it starts on the 16th. If you just check out The Truth About Cancer, and it's on the internet, and it's totally free, and it's a nine-part series that begins, uh, like, on Tuesday evening for, I, I, for nine days. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a support for community from the church who would like to take the bag and fill it with food for them. Thank you, Mary. I have an announcement. As most of you know, I belong to the Sweet Adeline's Barbershop group. And we got a call from us, one of the, uh, somebody in the area, who is working with uh, exchange students, and they have uh, a student that's looking for a home and they're looking for somebody who is uh, not only willing to give them a home for a year, I believe they're from Spain, I'm not positive, but they have a musical background and they're looking for somebody who, who could also have time to uh, maybe take them to their musical activities if they, uh, they're in high school and if they are in the choir. And, you know, so if anybody's inclined to do something like that, please uh, let me know and I'll get you in, uh, a phone number. Thank you. Ron. It's a wonderful experience. We had two exchange students for a year each when um, my children were in high school, and it, it was it was just amazing. And I believe we have a child in waiting. <laughs> Come on in. You are walking in the light, in the light. You are walking in the light, in the light of God. In the light, 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 in the light of God. Sydney, so can you come up here, please? We made Nana date cards oh. for Cindy. First one. We did two of them because when you're a Nana mother, then you get two. And on the inside, we wrote the answer to some questions about Cindy. <laughs> the first question was, 
what was Nana's favorite food? The second one is, how old is Nana? <laughs> 24 years old. <laughs> and her favorite color is? Blue. And now this is, how wish, I wish I was this tall. Five feet and seven inches. <laughs> and her favorite ways to relax are? Doing yoga. Oh. <laughs> what sites? <coughs> Doing websites. <clears throat> The website is doyogawithme.com. <laughs> it says, I appreciate you no matter what you do for me. I will always love you. You are caring, helpful, and nice. Oh. We're thinking her face is going to end up like this. <laughs> so happy Mother's Day. <laughs> We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you just the way you are. Your face just wound up like that when you said that, sir. I'll need to stretch across the aisles. Protects us, and the presence of God washes over us. Where 